Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve kinematics problems for physics classes, AP physics classes, different types of levels of physics classes. But first I want to ask, where have we been? Well, we've been talking about position, velocity, and acceleration versus time graphs using simulation. I've got a screencast on that. I'll put a link in the upper right in case you missed that and you want some more background understanding to be able to understand what you're doing here. This lesson right now is just going to introduce the kinematic equations and the strategies with five simple steps to be able to solve these problems. And after I do this quick lesson, we're going to move into example problems after I've introduced the equations and the strategies of how to work with them. So this is for a future lesson. There'll be a link to that at the very end in this playlist. So let's go ahead and get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is what does this term mean? Kinematics. Kinematics has to do with the study of motion without respect to the cause of motion. So the cause of motion is going to be a force. That's a push or a pull. We haven't gotten there yet. We're just saying like, what is the velocity of an object? What is the acceleration of an object at different points in time? And thinking about how to describe motion. And that's what we mean by kinematics. We're going to do this lesson for one dimensional kinematics, but everything I'm saying now is going to apply to two dimensional kinematics. So let's get our solid foundation going so we can move forward in the course. All right, I do want to say we've been using essentially five variables lately, and those are the five variables I want to focus on for our kinematics equations. So delta x, time, acceleration, v initial, and v final. Delta x is change in position, or you could call it displacement. And one of the main strategies we're going to use for solving these motion-based problems is to keep track of what the problem has given you in terms of these variables up here, what is being asked of you, and what variable you are ignoring. If you can write these things down and pay attention to this, you can essentially set up the problems correctly. Setting up physics problems is doing physics, so don't just jump right into a wall of math. Actually plan out what you're going to do, and if you can do that, you're going to be successful in physics. If you immediately jump right in and start doing some math, you are almost certainly going to make mistakes. Even if you're a smart person and you think, hey, I don't need to think about a problem before I do it. I can just plug in some numbers. Eventually, that will not work for you. All right, so let's see what those equations are going to be. Okay, first of all, I've shown them in two different ways. So this is the AP notation by the college board. This is what I consider to be an easier notation. So we mean V final, V initial, acceleration, and time. And we're either working on the x-axis or the y-axis, you could say. What are we ignoring? Well, in this case, we're ignoring our x or our delta x, this could say, over here. So generally, we're ignoring position or change in position, which would be displacement. So if the problem, let's say, gives you your v initial, your acceleration, and your time, and it asks you to solve for v final, but it says nothing about delta x or x, then you're going to use this equation right here. You may notice this equation comes naturally from the average acceleration equation. All right, so let's take a look at another equation you're going to need to use. The variable that's being ignored is going to be v final. You can show that as a v sub f or just v if you're going to use the college board's notation over here. There's no v final here in either version of the equation you look at. So if you're given a problem, let's say you're going to solve for v initial. All right, so you're going to solve for v initial and you're given your delta x, or your x initial, and your x final, and you're given your time, and you're given your acceleration, but there's no mention of your final velocity. You don't know how fast this thing is moving at the end of the problem, then you can use this equation right here. Start with this equation, and you're going to be in good shape. By the way, this is a pretty common equation to use for kinematics problems. And next up, we have our third kinematics equation, and the question is, what are we ignoring here? Well, that is time. If you know, say, your v initial and your v final and your delta x, but let's say the question asks you to solve for acceleration, but the question makes absolutely no mention of time, you're not given time, you're not asked to solve for time, either version of this would be a good equation used to start the problem with. Lastly, there is another useful equation we can use here, and what's being ignored here is acceleration. I will mention this last equation is not on the College Board equation sheet, the AP equation sheet, but the other three are. All right, and so next up, I want to talk you through these strategies in sequence. So this is exactly how you would solve physics problems in a kinematics section. 
and a lot of this applies to other sections as well. So start by writing out the information in the problem based on what is given. So you're reading the problem. Essentially, physics problems are like word problems. And as you read, you stop periodically and write things down like delta y is equal to zero, acceleration of the y is equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared. You write this stuff down as you read the problem. All right, next up, draw a quick diagram if the problem has a bit of complexity to it. So a lot of problems you're going to be expected to draw a diagram for. This is a step that a lot of smart students or lazy students, either one, will skip because they think they don't need to do this. But even smart students can make mistakes if they are not careful with setting up problems well. Okay, third, decide which equation to use. We have three or four kinematics equations. Which one or one should we use? The answer is after you list out what is known and being looked for, figure out which variable is being ignored in the problem. Each kinematics equation also ignores the variable. Use that corresponding equation to start the problem with. So, for instance, if there's no mention of time, absolutely no mention of time, meaning you're not given time and you're not asked to solve for time, then use the kinematics equation that ignores time. That's the one you're going to start with. I will say there are multiple ways to do problems. Some ways are easier than others. I'm explaining the easiest way to do these problems. And next up, you're going to isolate the equation for your unknown. So isolate for your unknown first before plugging in numbers. So solve algebraically for your unknown first before you put in your numbers. And last, plug in your numbers with units and solve. Note numbers go in at the end. Don't start with a wall of math. I'm being completely serious when I've had many, many students over the years who are smart students, but just skip to step number five. They just plug in a bunch of numbers. They get the problem wrong, and then they have no idea why. They call me over, ask for help, and I'm just looking at a wall of math. And it takes me a lot longer to figure out what's going on and what they did wrong and how they're not understanding this because it's just so unclear if you just start with a wall of math as opposed to if you follow these steps in order right here, it becomes a lot more clear not only what the problem is, what the answer is, but if there are any mistakes, they will pop out as well. So what I've decided to do is to give examples for this in another screencast to not make this too long. So hopefully these strategies have been helpful. Please stick around for the second part of this so you can see this in action. Take care and have a great day.